live from the broadcast center in Los Angeles. This is KCAL 9 News at 4. Hello, I'm Juan Fernandez. And I'm Lena Wynn. Homeowners made a gruesome find in the backyard of their Orange County home. A couple shot to death. KCAL 9 Orange County reporter Michelle Geely is live at the home in the city of Orange with the investigation. Michelle? That's right. The people who live in that gray and white house there right over my shoulder are safe and uninjured. Police say the dead couple who ended up in their yard are their acquaintances, but the motive for this murder-suicide is still not known. I left here about 11.15 and came back and was told there were two bodies there. Melinda Oshman was so worried about her next door neighbors in Orange that she tells me she peeked over her fence and saw a man and a woman on the patio dead. She couldn't confirm who it was, but soon after heard the neighbors were okay. I just saw two bodies, and I, of course, I didn't, didn't look at, couldn't see their faces. One was laying away, and I just saw blood on, well, I saw blood on both of them. And does it look to be a man and a woman? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a man and a woman, definitely. Police blocked off the quiet cul-de-sac on East Denise Avenue. A woman in her 60s who lives in the home was picked up by relatives. Another neighbor says the man who lives here was not a victim either. People wondered how the couple in the backyard are connected to the homeowners. You know, it's just frightening when it's right next to your house and, and, and there's, there's two people shot laying in the backyard. Police confirmed that the man and woman were shot and that a gun was found next to them. The neighbors don't recognize the blue Mercedes parked out front. Officials say it's believed to be connected to the murder suicide, but how the victims are related and why they came to this house is still being investigated. So was this some sort of a domestic argument that led to a shooting? Police tell me that is what they're looking into. Live in Orange, back to you. All right, Michelle, thank you. Students band together from coast to coast as they walked out of classes and demanded gun control. The nationwide protest marks the one-month anniversary since 17 people were killed in a Florida school shooting. KCAL 9's Amy Johnson is live in the Fairfax District now to show us how students there are demanding action. Amy. Well, Lena, dozens of students from the L.A. Centers for Enriched Studies walked away from school. They took their message to the street. They told me that they knew that they might have consequences to the actions, but they say they felt it was the right thing to do. This is for Martin Duque Anguino. A dove released for each victim in the Marjorie Stoneham Douglas school shooting. This is for Peter Wang. Just part of the ceremony during a walkout at La Crescenta High School. At Granada Hills Charter High School, students spelled out enough. There were similar scenes around the Southland and across the country at 10 a.m., raising awareness for more gun control. School should be the most like important, like safe zone. Hundreds of students walked out at Eagle Rock High School and gathered around 17 chairs, each with the name of a victim. We wanted to help remember all of the lives that were taken and hopefully um, help start a a trend to help change the society that we live in today. LAUSD school administrators allowed the students to express themselves without any consequences. I'm very proud of our students. LAUSD interim superintendent Vivian Ekchian. The fact that they wanted to express themselves and engage in dialogue and strategize around what they needed to do differently. But not everyone was on board. I'm really against walkouts. You know, I think we uh, these people could protest on their own time. Um, I come to school mainly to learn, and that's it. But at L.A. Center for Enriched Studies, or LACES, dozens of students could be seen from our chopper walking away from their campus. We walked out to stop gun violence. Um, we want people in office to do something about it, so we're walking now to try to make a change. They say they knew there could be consequences. I was kind of scared about the consequences because uh, we, we weren't really supposed to, like, walk, but we felt that... It was important to walk, so we do what we felt was right. Now, those students that walked away from the campus here were marked truant, but overall, the district says there were no major problems on this day for walkout. I'll send it back to you. In All the right, thank you so much, Amy. And they weren't alone. Schools in the San Fernando Valley were also taking their message out of the classroom. Sky 9 was over Burbank High School as teenagers sat down on the front steps. And there was also an assembly at John H. Francis Polytechnic High School in Sun Valley. Students circled the uh, track and held a sign with the hashtag, never again. 
Students in Manhattan Beach walked out this morning and came together at the campus quad. At Miracosta High School, there was 17 seconds of silence. Then they read the names of the 17 victims in Parkland, Florida. The school's wind symphony even played a song in tribute to the victims. Attorney General Javier Becerra returned to his alma mater to join the high school students rallying for stricter gun control. Becerra joined students from C.K. McClatchy High School in Sacramento for National School Walkout Day. Becerra referenced the children's book, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, and encouraged students to keep fighting for reform. Coming up right here at 4.30, we will have much more coverage of today's school walkouts and take a look at some of the demonstrations held from coast to coast and even as far away as Europe. Well, check out this image tweeted out by the San Luis Obispo Tribune. A city employee snapped this picture of a funnel cloud over El Choro County Park this morning. More rain is Ooh. on the way to the Southland. And for our first look at the weather, let's uh, go over to meteorologist Amber Lee now. Amber? Hi, Lena. Yes, yeah, so that very system that contributed to that funnel cloud on the central coast is now making its way over to us. And you're probably wondering if you're looking outside, hard to believe, right? We're looking at another storm system moving in because we have partly to mostly sunny skies right now. But take a look at the radar. We're starting to see a lot more of that activity really starting to push in. So in the next few hours, Things are quickly going to change. We're already starting to see more of the clouds uh, really popping up and bubbling up near the foothills in our mountain communities. But I also want to point out that this system has a little bit more of the instability uh, coming in because not only do we see a funnel cloud, but we're also getting reports of lightning strikes just a couple hours ago as it was going through the Central Valley. And now we're also looking at some very light showers, some light rain for the western portion of the San Fernando Valley. So we can see some rain cells starting to rotate through. So we're starting to see a little bit more action, but we're already feeling the winds ahead of the system. So a wind advisory has been issued, and that's going to go on until later tonight, including the Antelope Valley and also the Apple Lucerne Valleys and then areas like Palm Springs and Indio. So areas in the high desert communities may not see any rain at all, but they're going to see a little bit more wind. And so the winds are already picking up or double digits across most of Southern California. 23 mile per hour sustained winds for Lancaster, 29 for Apple Valley. I have more on your hour by hour forecast on when we can actually expect more of the widespread rain activity. Back to you. All right, Amber, thank you. President Trump is in Missouri after leaving Los Angeles this morning. KCAL 9's Jasmine Veal shows us his departure caused quite a traffic mess in downtown this morning. People waved goodbye as President Trump drove out of downtown LA this morning. His motorcade passed clusters of onlookers as he left his hotel at the Wilshire Grand, less than 24 hours after first landing in San Diego. It's pretty exciting. Ben Gruber and his fiance just happened to be visiting from the East Coast. Yeah, we're used to this because we see this in New York all the time. We, uh, we live in Manhattan, so uh, he's always by Trump Tower. Trump was running about 30 minutes behind schedule. The president made his way to Dodger Stadium, where Marine One took him to LAX. A trip that law enforcement worried could cause mass street protests or clashes between supporters and opponents. But instead, there were several modest rallies around L.A. and Beverly Hills last night. Dozens of police officers kept Trump's hotel surrounded this morning. Well, I just think it's a shame that our president needs this much um, backup to get from here and there safely. Um, but it's very important to me. I'm a huge Trump supporter. He's my guy. I've felt better about him than the last couple presidents we've had. The largest crowds greeted Trump at the San Diego border yesterday, where he toured the eight wall prototypes. Back in L.A., the rain, coupled with typical heavy traffic, held drivers at times at a standstill as several streets remained closed through the afternoon. Exciting that he's here, but it's a little bit of a hassle because, um, you know, all the roads are closed down and we weren't sure about how we were going to get home. And, um, you know, it's kind of a inconvenience. You can see work crews have made quick cleanup around the hotel where Trump spent the night trying to get these streets, all of them, back open. A mile stretch of the 110 freeway was also closed this morning as his motorcade headed to Dodger Stadium. Here in downtown LA, Jasmine Veal, KCAL 9 News. Larry Kudlow, an economic analyst and conservative TV commentator, has been chosen to become the next White House economic advisor. He will replace Gary Cohn, who resigned last week. Kudlow served as Mr. Trump's informal economic advisor during the 2016 election campaign. He is a supporter of free trade and firmly opposed to the sweeping tariffs on steel and aluminum imports the president signed last week. This comes just one day after Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was fired. Mulalenghi looks at the revolving door at the White House. 
God bless America. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson is on his way out after being fired Tuesday. Right. But the president may not be done shaking up his cabinet. I'm really at a point where we're getting very close to having the cabinet and other things that I want. That may be an ominous sign for others believed to be on the outs with President Trump. Veterans Affairs Secretary David Shulkin is rumored to be among those Shulkin. who might be the next to go. His department has seen turmoil in the political ranks, and he was reprimanded for using taxpayer dollars to pay for his wife's trip to Europe. Housing and Urban Development Secretary Ben Carson spent $31,000 on a new dining room set for his office. And National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster doesn't see eye to eye with the president on issues such as the Iran nuclear deal. And of course, the president has never been pleased that Attorney General Jeff Sessions recused himself from the Russia investigation. He should not have recused himself almost immediately after he took office. And if he was going to recuse himself, he should have told me prior to taking office, and I would have quite simply picked somebody else. Sessions defended the decision again this weekend. I was advised by the professionals, career people in the department, and I felt like I had to uh, recuse myself. Democrats call the turnover within the Trump administration chaos. Okay. I've never seen a presidential administration so basically disorganized, at war with one another, uh, creating such huge problems for the country. The Trump administration has had more turnover than any previous administration over the same time period. Mola Lenghi, the White House. Outrage grows over the death of a dog on a United Airlines flight. Coming up, we'll hear from the grieving family. She infamously lost four and a half billion in wealth overnight. Today, she's officially charged with fraud. And the cold never bothered him anyway. See who came to the rescue, to rescue the police rather, after their van got stuck in the snow. Already following CBS LA on Facebook? Follow these steps to make sure you continue to see our stories on your news feed. First, click on the triangle pointer in the top right corner of your Facebook page. Select News Feed Preferences. Then click Prioritize Who to See First and select CBS LA. 